Thank you everyone for your patience. Welcome to what's gonna be a, a truly memorable evening. We're gonna get started. I'm gonna ask everyone to, to please stand. Um, we're delighted to have Hall of Fame pool player and pool's American Idol, Lori John Hassan, to kick off this evening's festivities with the national anthem. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's the way to start a banquet. I hope everyone's ready for a truly memorable evening in which we honor the player champion, Francisco Django Bustamante, and the champion of players, Terry Bell and Larry Hubbard. For what it's worth, I'm Mike Pinozo. I will be your host tonight. <laughs> and I'd like to formally welcome you to the 2010 Billiard Congress of America Hall of Fame Banquet and what is apparently the American Pool Players Association National Convention. <laughs> Really an amazing turnout and um, touching tribute to the impact that Larry and Terry have had on your all's lives and uh, further testament to the impact they've had on, on our sport. Um, and in an effort to make all of our APA friends feel a little more welcome, a little more at home tonight, we've established a handicap system for dinner. <laughs> Talk to Jason and we've classified you all. And uh, twos and threes are gonna get their dinners first, give you about a 10 minute head start on everyone else. <laughs> Fours and fives will be slightly thereafter, and uh, sixes and sevens, and you know who you are, Norm. Um, you're gonna have to give up a little weight, literally. <laughs> All you're getting for dinner is a roll and butter. This is what I, I call this the banquet equalizer. thinking of franchising it through banquet halls around the country. <laughs> Tonight we honor the great Francisco Bustamante, once the sorcerer's apprentice, but now a great champion with his own legacy. We also honor Terry Bell and Larry Hubbard, 
whose gutsy move to create a national amateur league association 30 years ago has introduced literally millions of players to our sport. Tonight's banquet is brought to you by the United States Billiard Media Association and the Billiard Congress of America. The USBMA is a membership group of magazine, online journalists, television commentators, and videographers who cover the sport. The USBMA is also responsible for voting on the Hall of Fame. Joining us tonight, I'd like to introduce just a few people from the USBA, member, the USBA members who are here tonight. Harold Simonson and Sherry Stout from Pool and Billiard Magazine. From inside pool, J.R. Calvert and Sally Timko. From Billiards Digest, Nick Leader. Uh, Mike Howard and Jerry Forsythe from AZ Billiards are still over taping matches. ESPN commentator Mitchell Lawrence. Ricky Bryant from Inside English. And Professor Cuball, Paul Frankel. USBMA is producing this event along with the Billiard Congress of America, which has always been committed to maintaining the heritage of one of the most exclusive halls of fame in all of sports. Representing the Billiard Congress tonight are the association's CEO, Rob Johnson, and board chairman, Ivan Lee of Simonis USA. I'd also like to welcome director Karim Balaj of Predator Group. I'd like to acknowledge, and I can't thank enough, uh, Barry Berman and his daughter Shannon Pascal. Um, they've been amazingly helpful in getting this pulled off. We try to operate this uh, from Chicago, which isn't easy, and Barry's always been there anytime I needed a phone call to make, to get something moved, like the entire banquet, or you know, anything I needed. He and Shannon have been just absolutely amazing. Um, Barry is also responsible for purchasing a, a table for some of our pro player friends to be able to watch their contemporary Francisco go into the Hall of Fame. So I'd like to thank you guys very much from the bottom of my heart. I'd also like to thank Char I'd also like to introduce Charlie Williams because, well, because I forgot to introduce him last year. <laughs> he, was, he was supposed to speak, uh, say a few words about Johnny Archer, and I completely blew by him, so I apologize, Charlie. I think, uh, in retrospect, subconsciously, I was probably just really in denial with the fact that we were gonna let you speak at a banquet. <laughs> this time, I'd like to welcome a very special guest tonight, Alan Krasnoff was first elected to the Chesapeake City Council in 1990. He was re-elected in 94, 98, 2002, and 2006. In 2008, he resigned his, uh, his council seat to run for mayor, and in July of that year, he was elected the mayor of the city of Chesapeake. While he has an economics degree, Mayor Krasnoff also studied chiropractic medicine and has operated a chiropractic clinic in the city for many years. And Mayor, I, I just, I hope you brought business cards because you got a room full of pool players here and I gotta believe that this is right in your demographic wheelhouse. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Alan P. Krasnoff. Well, I'm the straight man tonight. So I can't get a laugh out of that, forget it. I'm not a pool player, what can I say? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, does that mean I should sit down now? <laughs> That's good. I, I, first of all, I, I want to seriously tell you, you have an incredible fan in Barry Berman. He is unrelenting. He's a pit bull. He doesn't know what it means to just say enough. He continues on and on. And he's already preparing for the 32nd annual BCA Hall of Fame, believe me. Yes, indeed. And to know that I actually shook somebody's hand named Bustamante. I didn't know who he was. But I could tell you, his grip is firm, and he probably can hold a cue stick. 
Indeed he can. I, I'm just so impressed that three inductees tonight going into your incredible exclusive Hall of Fame. I mean, I have wealth in hogs. 4-H club, come on, it's Chesapeake. I, I welcome other hogs, Holly Davidson's, you know, come on. But you know, there's something about getting a ball in a hole. <laughs> I can tell you that. I, I, I'm just, really indeed. Who are our wonderful Chesapeake people that are in the leagues here? Would you please raise your hand, because i got to suck up to you. <laughs> the youngest one in the group, great. Stick around a couple of more years. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. No, seriously, with all respect, you, I'm so thrilled that you chose Chesapeake, Virginia. Chesapeake, Virginia is 85th in Money Magazine as a place that people want to live. Chesapeake, Virginia is 45th in Parenting Magazine because of all the opportunities we offer as it relates to recreational activities. Chesapeake, Virginia is known for getting things done, believe me. How you doing, Pat? All right. But anyway, with all that being said, we just thank you for being here. We look forward to you. If we could serve you in any way, we appreciate that you chose the Marriott in Chesapeake. We can tell you this. If there's anything that we can do for you, please call Barry Berman. <laughs> and I want to thank you all. Mr. Pinozo, you're a far better man than I am because you got this crowd going for me, and you're very kind. I am off now to, believe it or not, to eat barbecue. That's Chesapeake staple. Come on. <laughs> barbecue and fried chicken. Thank you so much. God bless. Before you leave, Your Honor, we'd like to make sure that by next year you are a pool player. <laughs> So our good friends at Predator have, have given you this cue. Somebody put it together. And Great. yeah, it skew, screws together at this oh. end. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you here again next year. Right. And thank you for all Chesapeake has done for us. No, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. See, I tell like it is, I don't play pool. But next year. <laughs> it's all right, Your Honor, I don't play pool either. <laughs> One of the things I've always loved about the Hall of Fame banquet is that you come to it and you realize immediately that you're absolutely surrounded by greatness. And tonight is no exception. Some great players in the crowd tonight watching their contemporary get inducted. Players who have a very good chance of being up here in the near future. I welcome you all. We're also honored to be joined by some of the greats of the game who have preceded Terry, Larry, and Francisco into the Hall of Fame. And I'd like to introduce those people right now. The player who has perhaps made the biggest impact in the sport over the last 30 years is, of course, Cesar Morales. For those of you who don't know the story, Efren Reyes' first tournament in the United States was at, in Houston at Reds Nine Ball Open, where he played under the alias Cesar Morales. <laughs> Funny thing is, I don't know at that time whether anybody else would have noted who Efren Reyes was. But not only did he win that title easily against a huge, killer field, he displayed shots, safeties, and cue ball wizardry that people just hadn't seen before in the United States. Suddenly, fans were streaming to pool tournaments just to see Reyes play, and American players had to learn a whole new game. At his most dangerous, when the first prize is $50,000 or greater, 2003 Hall of Fame inductee Efren Reyes It's always driven me crazy when I see players' resumes and they boast hundreds of tournament titles. But believe me, Mike Siegel has hundreds of significant tournament titles. In the 80s, Siegel dominated the game like few before or few after. He's a three-time US Open champion, 
five-time world champion and was named one of the top five players of the 20th century. He retired from the tour in 1984, but he's back playing in this tournament and still on the winner's side. Thank you. One of the most exciting players to watch and a master, an absolute master of playing and talking at the same time, <laughs> 1989 Hall of Fame inductee Mike Siegel. As you all now know, she's melted many hearts with her beautiful voice, but she's broken many more at the table. <laughs> the first pro tournament I ever covered was in 1981 at the Roosevelt Hotel in New York, and I saw her win her first world championship. She wasn't even driving yet. She went on to win seven more world titles, three US Open championships, three national championships with the WPBA, and more than 50 titles overall. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2002. Welcome back, Lori John Hassan. <laughs> At that very same world championship, I, like the rest of the pool world, was starstruck by the arrival of a 17-year-old Swedish champion named Eva Svensson. I was equally delighted, as was the rest of the pool world, to learn that she decided to stay in the United States permanently and play in the WPBA tour. And like Lori John, she proved to be much more than just a beautiful face. Ava ascended to the number one ranking in the sport, won the World Nine Ball Championship, the US Open, the WPBA National Championship, and numerous WPBA titles. Even more importantly, what she also has to her credit is years of hard work and selfless promotion of the sport. Few players, male or female, have done more to make our sport look good than 2004 Hall of Fame inductee Ava Lawrence. <laughs> One of the coolest customers at the table, Nick Varner was a two-time national collegiate straight pool championship, champion at Purdue University, two-time world straight pool champion, and the owner of one of the most ridiculous title runs the sport has ever seen. In 1989, Nick won half of the MPBA's 16 tour slate. In the 1980s, he was voted by his peers as the best all-around player in pool. High praise when you consider the talent during that period. Inducted in 1992, Nick Varner. <laughs> Last year in this very room, the Hall of Fame welcomed a player who started his pro career at 19 and has since earned his place as one of the game's all-time greats. He's a two-time World Nine Ball Champion, US Open Champion, and was named the Player of the Decade for the 90s. He's been considered the leader of American pool for almost a decade and continues to add titles to his budding resume, Johnny Archer. <laughs> Pat Fleming's contributions to the sport will become more and more significant as the years go by. A great player himself, Pat was always intrigued by the sport's lack of statistics. He introduced Pool to the player statistics in the 1980s with his total performance average and started videotaping matches with his company AccuStats Productions. But what started as a statistics project has evolved into the largest library of pool footage in the world. And through AccuStats, he's been preserving the game's history for more than 25 years. Inducted in 2008, please welcome AccuPat, Pat Fleming. At this time, I invite everyone to enjoy dinner, and we'll be back with the induction ceremony shortly thereafter. Thank you. Everybody enjoy dinner? The dessert was pretty cool, right? The little uh, whipped cream cue ball and the chocolate nine ball. Uh, what you probably don't know is that the uh, pastry chef here at the Marriott's kind of well known for designing desserts that, that fit the occasion. 
Um, should have seen what he did last week for the proctologist convention. That was, really, that was pretty impressive. In any event, wondered how that one was going to work. Um, we are going to start the presentations now, and we are going to start the presentation for our first inductee with a brief video. Check out the name. Balita? Ano? Si Django Bustamante, nasa Hall of Fame na daw. Talaga? Yung gandang balita yun. Dahil Pilipino ang nakakuha ng award na yun. Oo nga Iba yan. Mm, congratulate natin. Congratulate natin. Ah, congratulations, Django Bustamante. Bustamante. Nasa sa Hall of Fame, fame ka na naman. Pala. So, uh, congrats sa'yo ha. Ah, congrats sa'yo. Sa magandang karangalan sa Pilipinas at uh, Pilipino na, na, na nakakuha sa Hall of Fame, nung nakaraang mm -hmm. taon niya, nung nakaraang taon, si Efren Bata Reyes, ang ating iniidulong champion. Of course, Django Bosamante. So, Django, the congratulations. Ka. Iba ka, the best ka sa lahat. We just found out you got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Congratulations! Uh, I remember we played many, many years ago when I was still a youngster and I came by to Germany and uh, paid my lesson money there. You ran like seven or eight racks in a row on me. So eventually it was going to be time that you got inducted. Uh, congratulations again and all the best. Hey Django, congratulations on the induction into the Hall of Fame. You really deserve it. You know, Francisco, it's a pleasure to welcome you into the Hall of Fame. Uh, you really deserve it. Pare, congratulations on the Hall of Fame, man. You deserve it. You're a great player and I wish you all the best. Congratulations again, bro. Hi Django, congratulations for the induction into the BCA Hall of Fame. If anybody deserved it, then definitely you. Well done and all the best for the rest of your future. Your buddy, Ralph. Hey, Busty, I'm a former world champion, so reigning world champion. Well done on getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, pal. Hey, Django, you're in the Hall of Fame now. Buddy, you deserve it, but you have to promise once come back to Germany. People want you over there. And give me my money back. All the best, congratulations. Hey, Bosti, it's Mika here. Uh, just the most heartfelt congratulations uh, from me. I know you've been uh, working hard as a professional all your or your life and uh, one of your dreams came true uh, when you won the world championship nine ball in Qatar just recently and uh, I guess that opened the door for you and for another staple in your career and that's uh, being inducted into the Hall of Fame so congratulations it's been uh, amazing uh, amazing watching you play when I grew up and uh, I learned a lot from you thanks buddy I would like to congrat uh, Francisco Django was the month to be in Hall of Fame. Uh, great player that won a lot of tournaments and finally he won the World Nine Ball Championships also this year. So uh, it couldn't happen to a better person. Uh, but I want him to st stop stealing my, my chips on the <laughs> poker table when we play poker. So <laughs> that's his minus. Otherwise, that is a real nice guy from Napoleon. Pare, binabating kita sa paigiging all of famer mo. Ay, alam mo, matagal, matagal na rin pangarap mo rin na magiging all of famer na rin siguro. At saka kaya, kaya ka piniling all of famer dahil patanda ka na rin katulad ko. Congratulations, pare. Job with this. So, two balls to the title. And Django just gotta give Efren an easy shot. And then look at him and mock him in the face and say, I gave you an easy shot. And that's as easy as he's gonna get. That's as easy as, it, as it's got to get. There it is, this nine, how fitting, the legend. Crowd has to settle down this yeah. for the 2009 World Cup of Pool. Francisco Bustamante, welcome to the Hall of Fame. Has there ever been a player that deserves this accolade more than you? I think not. 
It seems a lifetime we've been working together on this great game, and I'm not sure whether both of us would have made it without each other. Francisco, I shared the disappointment in 2002 with you when you were beaten by Old Strickland, and I was so happy when you finally won the World Championships in 2010. Hey, but along the way, you've won events all over the world. You've represented Poole and the Philippines better than anyone I could have imagined, and it's been just a joy to work with you. World Pool League, World Pool Masters. Hey, who can forget the World Cup of Pool with Efren Rays last year? Pool is synonymous with Francisco Bustamante, and it's been an honor for Matram to be involved in your career. You've helped make our events the best in the world, and you know why? Because you are the best in the world. Francisco, you deserve your day. You deserve your honor. The Hall of Fame is richer with your presence. From all of us in England, at Matram Sport, and pool players around the world, we want to thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Enjoy this honor, and we look forward to seeing you soon, my friend, because without Francisco Bustamante, the world of pool is a poorer place. Former U.S. Open champion, former World Nine Ball champion, the man that Matrim Sports likes to call the Killer Pixie, Alex Pagalion, and Efren Reyes. Ang gantang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Bigyan po natin ng papuri ang tao na ang napakaimportante sa larong ito. Alam niyo po itong tao ng ito, parati akong tinatanong, matagal na kung bakit hindi daw siya manalo ng World Pool Championship. Sabi, sa dami-dami ng tournament na pinanalo niya, eh hindi pa siya nanalo ng World Pool Championship. Eh itong tao na ito, dumating na para sa kanya. At masyang masya siya dahil nanalo siya ng World Pool Championship. At lalo masya siya, nung tawagan kami ng, ng bago na ang presidente, Sino na Aquino. At ito pang ano to, mga isang araw lang, tumawag na naman siya sa akin, na, nabigyan daw siya ng inducting ng Hall of Fame. At gusto niya isama niya ako rito. At doon ako pinabahal. <laughs> eh kasi po, kasi nung ako nung inducting ako nung 2003 para sa Hall of Fame, hindi ako nagpunta rito. Dahil natatakot ako tumayo dito sa stage. <laughs> Nakabahal ako. Hindi ako marunong mag-ingin. Kaya ito, sinabi ko, Tagalog na lang. <laughs> ang tao ito, wala pang iba. Kundi ang aking matalag na kaibigan, Django Bustamante, at madalas din makakalabang ko rin siya. <laughs> It's easy for him to say. <laughs> That's pretty really long. Uh, can you say it again? <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, he's saying is um, uh, we wanna uh, honor Bustamane for being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Come on, guys, give him a round of applause. What Efren was saying earlier is um, he keep asking Efren um, why, how come he can't win the world uh, uh, World Bowl Championship? And Efren says he don't know, but <laughs> eventually uh, maybe his day will come. And finally this year, is it this year? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is this year. I'm sorry, guys. I've been. I haven't been in the pool circuit for the last three years, so I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I'm really happy for him too that he won the world championship. Uh, and then, uh, when Efren saying earlier, the most he's scared of is uh, coming up here in being inducted to the Hall of Fame because Efren said he couldn't speak any English. That's why he's so scared to come up in here. Well, me too. <laughs> Well, Efren and I, 
proud to honor uh, F oh, again. <laughs> Sorry, F and I are proud to honor you, our friend, Hall of Fame, uh, Francisco Bustamani. Thank you. to present Francisco with his jacket, ring, and plaque is Ivan Lee, the CEO of the Billiard Congress of America. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please, uh, I don't speak so good English, so try to understand my English. Uh, thank you, everyone. I still can't believe I'm here. I am very humbled by the honor you are giving me tonight. It has always been my dreams to win a world championship and to some, someday be in the Hall of Fame alongside by my childhood, childhood heroes and the great players who came before me. Today, all of my hopes and dreams have come true. I want to thank the United States Media Association, the Billiard Congress of America, my longtime sponsor, Poet Sports, Bear Costume, Cues, and Jack Justice Cases, for everything they have done to help my career. I also want to thank Mike Lebron for his lifelong friendship and all of the pool fans around the world who loves the game as much as we do. And of course, my wonderful family and loving wife. Without them, none of this would be taking place. I began uh, playing pool when I was 12 years old back in Tarlac City. I remember that like it was yesterday, carrying, carrying players cues for them just to be around the game and hoping to learn as much as I can. Around 1985, I met uh, Jose Parica and Cesar Morales, oh I'm sorry, Ephraim uh, Reyes. <laughs> For the first time, they were both already heroes in the Philippines. I remember playing rotations against Efren, and he spot me 46 points, and I still lost. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> right, pare? <laughs> For the next few years, I travel around in Philippines playing all the time gambling to support myself and trying to always improve. In 1990, I went to play in tournament in Germany and I met a local pool room owner who asked me to become his house pro. So I moved to Kiel, Germany for a few years and worked in the pool room. Around 1992, I began friendship with a friend and we have been like brothers, even since. I always look up to Ephraim because he had so much respect 
from everyone. And I wanted to be like that. My first trip to the U.S. was in 1992 to play at the Bicycle Club in Los Angeles. I was lucky to win the tournament and almost 20 years later I stand here today very proud to accept this wonderful honor. Thank you from my heart for all you have done for me. seems so sure there was a third page in there. <laughs> you look good with the glasses, though. Really? Sharp glasses. We'll now see a, uh, a brief video on our second inductees for the evening. In the mid to late 70s, a group consisting of some of the top pool players of the era came together to discuss the state of professional pool. As these individuals discussed how to elevate the prominence of the sport, one man came forth with a vision to organize the amateur side of the game. That man was Terry Bell. Though amateurs were already playing pool from coast to coast, each pool room in every town played by its own set of rules. Everywhere we went we saw people that loved to play. They played by different rules, even the professional tournaments, for example. We pretty much make up the rules at each tournament. His reasoning seemed simple enough. Without fans who understood the game, how could professional pool thrive? It seemed to me what was missing here was nobody was looking to spend any money to organize the, the amateurs. And of course, my concept was how do you have stars if you have no fans? Bell had established himself as a solid road player winning numerous titles in the late 70s, including the Birmingham Open, Memphis Classic, and Houston Open. But Bell's idea fell on deaf ears amongst his peers, with the exception of a player he had known casually from various tournaments, Larry Hubbard. Hubbard was a well-known player during the 70s, winning the 1976 U.S. Open, the 1977 World Nine Ball Championship, and the 1978 World Eight Ball Championship. The meeting, of it, as I remember, was Harry McConnell and uh, Richie Florence. Uh, they're up there talking about, uh, you know, getting some, that they had some investors ready to put some money into the, into the sport and so on, and they were going to put on uh, three or four of these $150,000 tournaments and so on. And I basically raised my hand and I suggested, you know, do you think we should funnel some of this money towards organizing the amateurs? And quite frankly, everybody looked at me like I was an actual a stone idiot. And uh, Larry was the only one in the room who said, you know, he's right. This is the type of thing that we really need to be talking about. But that's it. But I do remember that meeting, that meeting, and I, it might have been a little bit of a turning point for, uh, for Larry and I. Despite the less than enthusiastic response to Bell's concept, the two forged a bond. A bond that would not only shape their lives, but the future of pool. It was here that the concept of the American Pool Players Association, also known as the APA, was born. Like many entrepreneurs, Bell and Hubbard struggled to get their concept off the ground in those early years. Slowly but surely, their concept began to blossom, member by member, team by team. In 1981, the APA hosted their first national championship with a whopping $12,500 total prize fund. Today, the APA boasts nearly 270,000 members in 46 states, as well as leagues in Canada and Japan. This year, the APA will pay out more than $1.5 million in guaranteed prize money at their national championships. Over the past 30 years, the APA has introduced more than a million people to the sport of pool through the APA leagues. Thousands of bars, taverns, and pool rooms rely on the steady stream of revenue from APA leagues to keep their doors open. APA members alone account for hundreds of thousands of queue sales. In addition, the APA has been one of the few billiard organizations who've been successful at bringing major corporate sponsors to the sport, like Anheuser-Busch, Jack Daniels, Molson, 
and RJ Reynolds Tobacco. They're also one of the largest sponsors of Women's Professional Pool, as well as one of the largest advertisers in the billiard industry publications. They've provided the opportunity for a better life to hundreds of APA franchise owners, better known as league operators, who've been able to realize their dreams of owning and operating their own business in the billiards industry. I went out to the uh, league operator school, it was a three-day school, and I have to say it changed my life forever. It was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It's been quite a relationship and a journey, and we've been involved uh, now for the last 20 or so years having a great time uh, with the APA and thanks to the good foundation work that Terry and Larry put together. So uh, they're just a great, great couple of individuals that have done so much for our sport. Had Bell and Hubbard not pursued their dream more than 30 years ago, it's hard to say how the billiard landscape might look today. I just want to say, Larry, Terry, thank you. You've changed my life. I can't never thank you enough. I'm excited. You belong in a Hall of Fame and best of luck to you. I want to congratulate them for their great uh, honor here as being a BCA Hall of Fame member. Congratulations, Terry and Larry. You've done a great job and keep up the good work. These guys travel heavy. To introduce Terry and Larry and bring them into the, welcome them into the Hall of Fame, I'd like to bring up Renee Lyle, president of the American Pool Players Association, and Terry's stepdaughter. Well, I swore I would get through this without crying, and hopefully the crying took place during the video and not during my speech, but. Tonight, I have to tell you guys, I am both honored and very proud to be participating in the Hall of Fame induction service for these two gentlemen. Since the announcement that Terry and Larry would be inductees, I have spent a lot of time thinking back over the history of the APA, how it began, what it's become, and the impact that it's had on the billiards industry. These men loved the game back then, and they still love it today. And because of their love of the game and their dedication and hard work over the years, they've created an ever-growing and successful business which has had a positive effect on every other area of the billiards industry. Since its, since its inception in 1979, the APA has introduced over one and a half million people to the game of billiards. These players that joined our leagues, they've purchased millions of dollars of billiard products because of their participation in APA league activity. And just as in, in any other organized sport, APA league players want to own their own equipment. Billiard retailers, related manufacturers, and distributors have all benefited greatly from the APA member purchases. Billiard rooms, sports bars, taverns, private clubs, and other places that host APA league activity have also experienced greater success as a result of their involvement with APA. In 2009 alone, APA league play represented over 40 million patron hours, not including the additional patron hours that are generated as a result of tournaments, special events, or practice time. And as mentioned in the video, APA has always been a supporter of professional pool. That was their love. It's where they started. But our focus has always remained on the amateur player, specifically the lesser skilled player. From the very beginning, Terry and Larry kept their focus on the lesser skilled players. They always believed that the best way to grow the sport and its participation was to find a way to appeal to Joe Public who didn't really consider himself to be a pool player. There are only so many good players out there. However, there are lots of unskilled players, people waiting to be introduced to the game. 
APA rules and formats were developed always with the lesser skilled player in mind. The APA handicapping system was designed to equalize play amongst players of all abilities. Terry and Larry always believed that to be successful building a national league system, it was important to give equity to the people who run your leagues around the country. Thus, APA stumbled into franchising. In 1982, we were advised by our attorney that our way of conducting business was actually a form of franchising and therefore we needed to start acting like all other franchisors. In fact, I think what he actually said was something to the effect of, if you look like a duck and you walk like a duck, then you probably are a duck. So you need to do all the other things that the ducks do. Today, we're proud that APA has 270 franchisees throughout the United States, Canada, and Japan. And we're extremely proud of the array of awards and accolades that we've received for our franchising efforts. Since APA was founded in 1979, there's never been a year where its membership didn't surpass what it had the prior year. Even these last few years when the economy has been so bad. And every year, more members qualify to play in APA national championships. As the video said, APA finished its first year with about a thousand members and held its first national championship with a purse of $12,500. In 2010, APA has a still ever-growing membership base with 270,000 members, and this year we paid out over $1.5 million through our national championships. And at the national level, I have to actually give credit to Mike on this one. He asked me a question, which caused me to do a little bit of adding up of math and stuff. But uh, since our beginning in 1981 in our national championships, we've actually paid out more than $20 million to our members through our national championship programs. <laughs> the impact that Terry and Larry's dream has had on the billiards industry has been incredible. On behalf of APA's franchisees and its staff, its locations who host league play and the members who play there, the Billiard Congress of America and its membership of manufacturers, distributors, retailers, room operators, and other related billiard companies. I want to recognize and commend Terry Bell and Larry Hubbard for their service to the entire billiard community. If you would please help me welcome Terry Bell and Larry Hubbard to the Billiard Congress of America. Thank you, Mike. 
uh, I guess it's been about three months since you called me and told me that uh, this was going to happen. I certainly cannot imagine, uh, I did not imagine at the time that it was going to be like this. It's quite overwhelming. Um, so first of all, I've got a lot of people to thank here. Uh, starting with you, Mike, uh, and your, all your involvement in the, in the Hall of Fame and for, uh, for planning uh, and creating this uh, special ceremony and this very special evening. Thanks a lot, Mike. Appreciate it. I also want to, um, want to thank all the industry members that supported us with their, with their votes. We appreciate that. I also want to thank all the Hall of Famers that are here. I appreciate you being here. It's nice to see you all again. I want to congratulate Francisco, a great player, very deserving. And congratulations on your induction into the Hall of Fame. I got to thank our marketing department for putting together that uh, that nice video, and also want to thank Renee. Of course, if you want to have nice things say, to, uh, said about you, make sure you get a relative up here. Uh, but uh, yes, Renee's my stepdaughter. Olinda and I are so proud of Renee. She's been at the helm of APA now for, I guess, more than a dozen years, I believe. Go ahead. Is it more than a dozen? 16, sorry. Time goes by for me a lot faster these days. I hate to admit the, uh, that it's been that long, but she's done such a tremendous job. We're so proud of her. And, uh, and you know, a, a lot of people around the industry have come to know her quite, uh, quite, a, quite well because she's been on the industry board, the BCA board, for the last several years. And quite frankly, she's just a doer. She gets things done. And I think the world needs more doers and fewer talkers, and she's definitely one of the doers. So thank you, Renee. And uh, uh, you've been in my Hall of Fame for quite some time. Now, I think something that makes uh, this evening so much even more special, Mike, is the, uh, the fact that so many of our uh, so many of our uh, friends and family have traveled uh, to be here to to witness and share this evening with Larry and I, and uh, I just I'd like to spend a few moments with them, and uh, I, I just feel like I need to you know thank them for not only being here but for many of them for a role that they played in the APA. You know I think occasions such as this are really not about an individual or individuals, but rather it's about an achievement. And obviously, the achievement in this case is APA. So I don't think it's really a stretch to say that this is really kind of like a coming out party for the APA, a celebration. This is, a, this is kind of a celebration of, uh, of APA's success and the important role that I think it that plays in the, in the industry. And uh, there are a number of people here this evening that have been instrumental in APA's success. Uh, in our home office, we have almost 60 full-time em uh, employees now in our, in our home office, year-round full-time. And there's, there's many of them here this evening. I want to thank them for being here. There's a much larger number of our dynamic nationwide network of uh, franchise league operators here as well. I certainly want to thank them. Uh, uh, collectively, our league operator network and our home office staff are known as Team APA. So tonight, Team APA, I want to take this opportunity, Larry and I, on behalf of Larry, if I may, we want to thank you for making the, the dream, the vision, if you will, that Larry and I had some 35 years ago into the reality and the success that is APA today. And surely, surely, the recognition and the honor that's being bestowed upon Larry and I this evening Surely that honor is yours as well. Thank you so much, Team APA. Just about my entire family is here tonight, and I want to thank them. And some of them have been involved in APA as well. I have four wonderful and successful brothers. All four of them are here. And also one of my sisters-in-law, uh, Lisa, is here. Thank you, Lisa, for being here. And I want to especially recognize one of my younger brothers, Peter, 
Peter was instrumental in getting the APA going here out, out here on the East Coast in the early days, and he created a lot of momentum out here. And for the past 20 years or so, uh, Peter has been our agent, and he routinely mains, uh, maintains contact with and makes presentations to important people in the sponsorship world. Now, we know these are uh, lean times for, uh, uh, for sponsorship situations, but I know when the climate changes that he will bring sponsors forward. And when he does bring sponsors forward, we will do in the future, as we have done in the past, we will influence such sponsors to become involved in professional pool as a common sense extension of their relationship with APA. So perhaps, Peter, everybody in this room is rooting for you. We'll see about that. I also want to thank my mother. She's here. She has long been and remains to this day an inspiration to us all. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> my mother-in-law is here all the way from St. Louis. Thank you, Jewel. Thank you. And uh, my wife, Alindy, and I, we have four wonderful children. You've already met Renee, and you know how special she is. Our next in line is Greg, and Greg is here with his lovely wife, Sharon, and four of our grandchildren. We have six grandchildren. Four of our grandchildren. <clears throat> and that's uh, Josh, Hannah, Isaac, and Judah. And several years ago, Greg was living in Dallas, and he was working for D.B. Needham, one of the nation's largest advertising agencies. We asked him to come to work for us, which he did. And now he heads up our marketing. He's a director of marketing. And he and the marketing team, they work hard to make the APA brand more attractive and more visible. Thank you, Greg. Our next in line is Kelly. Kelly's here with her husband, Justin, and other two grandchildren, Maya. Maya and Paul. Kelly is quite an artist and very creative and works in our marketing department. And our youngest is still a senior in college. We don't know what his career path will be, but we'll be, I know we'll be proud of him. And, uh, but Derek has, always, Derek has always enthusiastically helped around the office whenever asked to. We appreciate, thank you, Derek. I also want to thank the entire Hubbard family for all of their friendship and support over the years. I want to especially mention one of Larry and Nancy's daughters, Elaine, because Elaine's been working full-time in the office now, I believe, for more than 20 years. Please don't say more than 25. Okay. And, and Elaine, Elaine is responsible for keeping all of our high-tech equipment up and going. Not an easy job. Thank you. I also want to thank Larry's, Larry's wife, Nancy. In the early days, both of our wives worked outside the company to support our families while Larry and I were launching this silly project. But when we could afford Nancy, we brought her on board. And she has always significantly con contributed to APA success. Thank you, Nancy. And of course, of course, Larry, Larry, what can you say? You know, uh, Larry's been a tremendous friend and a, and, a, and a great business partner. That's not to be taken for granted for now for, for way more than 30 years. And uh, he's just a tremendous uh, gentleman. And all the years I've known him, I've hardly ever heard him say a single bad word about any person. I've never heard him raise his voice or lose his temper to anyone, including me. And that's not easy, okay? <laughs> and. Um, there's one other thing I do want to say about Larry, and that's the fact that he truly was a great player. Uh, he, he, for those of you, for those of you, for those of you who do, 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 do not know it, he was known as the Iceman. And to the Hall of Famers that are here, I've known most of you as long as I've known Larry. You're the greatest players of your generation and some of the greatest players of all time. But he's one of you. He is the ice man. And 
I would urge you, I would urge you to invite him to join your club as a player at the first available opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate it. And last but not least, I would like to thank my lovely bride, Olindia, for all her love and support over the years. When I, uh, when, I, <clears throat> when I met Olindia, she was a vice president at a bank and had extensive financial experience. And again, when we could afford her, we brought her on board as our chief financial officer. And she remains our chief financial officer to this day, but of course to me, she is so much more. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> now, when I, when I looked on Mike's little itinerary down here, these were considered to be acceptance remarks. So on behalf of everyone that I've mentioned, oh, I, I, I gotta throw one last thing in here. You threw me a curveball. A bunch of people showed up here at the last minute that I didn't even know was coming, and that's not fair. <laughs> so Ron and Lynn and Ron and Pam and Clarence and Shelby and Deanna, and I know I probably forgot somebody, but whatever the case, Deanna was the first person that ever worked in our office. She was a high school student, first person we ever hired. Now she is a real estate tycoon, but whatever the case, there she is. <clears throat> So as acceptance remarks, on behalf of all of the people that I've been trying to recognize and thank this evening, and on behalf of those that I have undoubtedly forgotten, I accept. It's an honor to be here tonight, accepting this award for the success of the APA. It's taken many people, contributing a lot of good ideas and a lot of hard work, to drive the APA to the level of success it enjoys today. I'd like to thank everyone that Terry mentioned. I don't want to try to mention them all again, I can't remember. I'd like to thank all my family and friends that are here to share the evening with us. There's too many of them, I can't remember all of them either. <laughs> but I would like to say thank you to a few special people. First, I'd like to say thank you to my partner, Terry, for all that he's done. His contributions of ideas and relentless hard work on behalf of the APA and led the way to our success that we enjoy today. Thank you. I worked, I worked for them for over 30 years, and I couldn't have had a better friend or a better, better business partner to work with. I'd like to also thank my daughter Elaine for all her hard work. He's been with the APA now for over 20 years. She handles all our computer and hardware needs, handles our phone system, and does software work and I don't even know what else. But you've done a great job and been very important in our development. Thank you, Elaine. And last, but certainly not least, you've all heard it said that behind every successful man, you'll probably find a good woman. Well, in my case, that's especially true. <laughs> my wife Nancy, back in the days, when we were the APA was a little more than an idea, went to work and supported us while we tried to breathe life into the business. Without her help and all that she's done, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. Thank you, baby. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you all very much. Ladies and gentlemen, 2010 Hall of Famers, Larry Hubbard, Terry Bell, Francisco Bustamante. Thank you all very much for coming. We're going to get these guys together, take all the photos you want, stick around, chat with them, get some autographs. Thank you again for a great evening. See you next year. Thanks, man.